handmade, so you can um, choose the fabric. And we know that the fabric um, is called Ankara fabric. So that's a vibrant African fabric. Ankara fabric si simply means that it's a vibrant um, fabric and it's a um, all African fabrics uh, are different. So Ankara fabric just simply means that it's a vibrant um, print you'll know it because Ankara fabric is the same color on both sides. So when they take that Ankara fabric and does, uh, you know, and make those head wraps that are perfect for us that we don't have to tie, you can dress it up, you can dress it down. It's just perfect and it's so queenly. It is so queenly and we're getting, we're getting black history Every time you speak, Regina, you're educating us on a piece of our Afrocentric culture, and we appreciate that. Listening, listening, listen, listen. If you're listening in to the show, if you're tuning in right now, please like and share the post. We're going to hear from one of our guests. Regina, would you like to introduce Lakima? Yes, I would love to introduce Lakima. I've been knowing Lakima for about maybe four or five years, uh, we developed such a relationship that when I moved into my business location on Bush 4802, yes. everybody remember, Kima, and she came up with the name Tribe 4802. It was uh, me, Kima, and another black owner, uh, business owner that were there. And Kima was there with her uh, performances and uh, with her t-shirt business. So Lakima is not new to Tampa. Uh, she know, she's known in Hillsborough County, Pasco County, Pinellas County, and I think she's traveling up uh, North Florida right now. Yes. Um, she's such an artist. She's also uh, into music. Uh, she's painted a lot of the murals that we have around the Tampa Bay area. I think one of the first murals that I saw that Lakima had painted before I even know, knew her was over at Roulette Park. And if you remember that mirror right. that was on the tennis court, yes. Lakima painted that mirror. And I think she uh, was probably about 17. She can correct me on that. Um, oh also, if you're um, also if you're going down, uh, hold on, I got a call that I, I'm so sorry. Uh, also, okay. if you're going down the show 60, is <laughs> it's also if you're going down 60 towards downtown, the building that's on the right as you're going downtown. Lakima painted that building. She did the mural on that building as okay. well. So um, she's well known in Hillsborough County as well as some murals that she's painted in Pasco County. Um, without further ado, Lakima Matthews, we are so happy to have you in the Tampa Bay area here in Tampa that we can call our own. Thank you so much for all that you do. She created a create, uh, creative lounge. Yes. And um, with that, she's able to uh, showcase other artists, poets, and uh, allow other businesses to express themselves uh, through poetry. So, Lakima Matthews. Lakima. Oh, uh, hey. So, uh, yes, I am Lakima Matthew. Uh, my, my artist name, my performance name is Kimba. And um, you guys can find me at Miss Celsia, M I S S Y L T A. Um, I go by Miss Celsia, I'm AKA Kimba. And so, yes, I actually started my career as a professional artist when I was 15 years old, um, painting a mural at Rollette Park. I did another mural right after when I was 17 with my mom. My mom and my sister, my mom was holding my sister in this piece um, at Rollette Park. So you weren't, you weren't uh, wrong, Miss Regina. It was just like the timeline, you know, 15, 17 and up. <laughs> but um, so since then, uh, like, I got involved with an organization called Community Acceptance Zones, and they really um, opened up a lot of doors for me to be able to uh, express my artistry. Um, I started off as just a person that drew. I can draw anything I see. And then when I got involved with community stepping stones, that's how I got involved with painting murals and stuff. And since then, I've been uh, painting murals. Uh, recently, I started to, um, when I was about 18 years old, I started um, playing uh, the, uh, the djembe. And just in recent years, I've been utilizing um, the, the djembe 
uh, and performances. So to, now today, people know me as a visual artist and a percussionist. Um, and yes, I am the owner of uh, the owner and founder of Creative Lounge, and it's a. Uh, uh, at Creative Bios, we embrace the art. We strive to change the phrase starving artists, star artists, by opening up our platform for artists, creative minds, and businesses alike. And uh, this is actually where I met uh, Miss Kiki, an old school poet. Like, I, I met them, uh, they attended some events at Creative Lounge, and we built a connection. Uh, Regina, she had opened the door to give me my first spot to like um to really test out the waters of Creative Wells because um years ago I, I had the vision for Creative Wells and Miss Regina gave me a starting point by allowing me to um rent out one of her spaces in her shop and, and from there I transitioned from that space to a, uh to another space and now um now um people know that all I ever wanted was of all of where your murals are and congratulations on being part of a team that uh, created the largest mural in the state of Florida. We're gonna just take a minute cause we can hear you now and just let you allow your gift to resonate on the drums and we yield to okay. you. The percussion. Right. And uh, before I say that behind me, you guys are yes. actually got the first, first, um, uh, peak of the, the the portable mural that um that is going to be unveiled unveiled from um at uh Brooksville where I'm actually headed right now. So I know, is, uh, no, we are so excited that you have joined right. us. <laughs> you have joined us on the road, and we'll talk more about the mural that you're about to unveil. Once you reach um, Jacksonville, we can see a snippet of of, of that piece. And that's just so fascinating. Brooksville, yeah. how you can take something so small and then magnified on such a broad scale. I'm married to an artist and it just, it just amazes me. All of my kids are artistic. I can't draw a stick person. And so uh, I, I, my hat's off to, to all of you. But let's hear the percussionist, like Cuba. We were on for a minute. So to our radio listening audience, we want you to know that she was on. You can you can see that she's playing. We weren't quite sure what was happening with the volume. Lakima, if you can hear me, we can't hear the, the drumming portion, 
but we thank you for the snippet that we got to hear. And so maybe when our ports come on, you might be able to give them a little, little background of what it is that you are doing. See, there we go, there we go, I like it, I like it. And so I know you're, going, you're time sensitive, but let's just take this opportunity and segue in because we have two phenomenal guests and the three of you, the four of you, collaborate, collaborate and work together on a number of projects. And so we're going to start with, let's start with the daughter first, Kiki. Kiki is a Tampa native, a mother of two, and a United States Navy veteran. Thank you for your service, Ms. Kiki. Her love for poetry was inspired by her father, old school, and we'll hear from him shortly, at the young age of eight years old. Through her poetry, she hopes to teach, inspire, and uplift the melanated community to love and to forgive themselves, to work for themselves, and to live for their future. Welcome to the show, Miss Kiki Kamua. Kamal, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm I'm so blessed to have you to be here. So I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you, Queen Vision Apparel, for bringing me and you know introducing me to Miss Cheryl. And thank you, Kima, as well. I'm I'm delighted to be here. We, we are delighted to have you here. For those that missed Sankofa, the winter extravaganza, you missed a treat. It was embodied with Afrocentric culture all throughout that whole entire gospel event park. So shout out to Rebirth as well, who collaborated with Queen's Vision African Apparel. Tell us a little bit. I read about it. Eight years old. What does poetry even sound like at eight years old? Miss Kiki the poet. <laughs> um, my dad uh, always told us that we were going to be, you know, his backup uh, poet singers or whatever the case may be. So he had us singing this uh, one um, kind of poem and he called it rap poetry. And he would uh, say, rap poetry, rap poetry, the rhythm of the mind, the soul, the ease, rap poetry, rap poetry. It's all about us and all about me, rap poetry. So that kind of stuck with me. Um, even when like I would have like trials and tribulations as an adolescent, I would think of like music. It would always be my, my, like, my escape. And that song would always come back to me, like rap poetry, rap poetry. So I think that kind of led me into like, um, becoming, you know, a poet, uh, just kind of following off into his footsteps and saying, you know, hey, you know, we're in this together, you know, you're not just doing this by yourself. Now you got somebody else that's willing to do it with you. So let's see where we can fly. Well, fly, you done. Mm -hmm. And you, and it's just incredible. And, and, and I see your father old school just beaming with, with, with joy. And so Re Queen Regina, when did you first hear Kiki the Poet? Kiki came into the store and uh, she told me that she had met uh, Lakima, which okay. I, I, I really like how we share um, as black businesses, artists uh, with one another so that we can connect. Uh, she came in and she said, I'm a poet and I really want to participate in your uh, event. And I think it was Juneteenth of last year. Uh, I think it was okay. Juneteenth or it could have been um, the May event. The, uh, so she come in and she did some poetry. I said, well, can you do some poetry for me? And Ooh. because it's a natural and she's so natural at it, she gave me some poetry that really touched me. It was um, about Black women. And it really touched me. It was about relationships. So it was about so many poet uh, poets that she had read for me. And then she said, my dad is a poet also. They came in and they sat and they met with Pastor and I, and I think we, you were here a couple of hours. We really <laughs> connected and I was so, yeah. And not because uh, it wasn't a good two hours, we really connected and I, her journey and her story on how she became a poet and how it was pulled from her dad, which is a black man that is yes. doing poetry and during a time, you know, he has a book. And I was very impressed with her. And I am still impressed that she's a Black mother, retired veteran, 
and she's uh, supporting the community and all of the events, not just my event. You'll find her at just about any event. She's amazing. She is amazing. And so when you hear, and, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over to to Lakima. And Lakima, if you can still, and, and we'll try, we'll try it um, again. When you hear Miss Kiki the poet rap about rap poetry, and it's all about us and not me. When you when you hear what she is saying, what comes to mind and your when your hands begin to just kind of touch that drum? Mm -hmm. uh, rhythm and uh, rhythm and blues. Rap rhythm is and poetry. blues. Yeah, because rap is poetry. Poetry is rap, and it's it's true too. You know. We heard it. We heard we heard a beat. Give us another one. <laughs> it's gonna be like that today, but that's all good. Well, listen, thanks, Akima, because we know you're we know you're beating that 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 drum. And you can come back and tell us a little bit about the drum because Queen Regina from Queen's Vision African Apparel has a nice gift that we're going to be giving away. Ricky, if you can tune in and see who's joining us on our Facebook Live. Regina, make some noise. Yay. <laughs> we didn't hear that either. I, I guess it's just the sound of- Yeah, there must the be some cancellation feature because we can't hear you. They don't want the live music. That's right. what's happening. Right. They hate it on the live okay. music. It's beautiful, Regina. And so we're going to we're going to give that away on the second hour of the show. So make sure you're tuning in and listening in. But since it's a giveaway from Queens, tell us a little bit about that drum and why you selected that for such a time as this, celebrating Black History Month. Yes, this is the Calabas. And I'm, I'm bringing it in. I, I was undecided on what I wanted to bring in. This is something different. Um, it's, it's a musical instrument that you can use. Um, it's uh, grown in um, Africa. It's um, cut, as you can see, it has a hole. So it oh. grows like a fruit. Each one grows differently. And they take these coils and they, uh, they wrap it and they put the beads on it. Um, it originated with the tribes in uh, Nigeria, with the Yoruba, with the Yoruba tribe but it's used now all over Latin America, everywhere, because it gives us that African, you know, that keep us rooted. That it keeps us that rooted. And music is something that we all can relate to. Um, so this is what I want to give out, the calabash and enjoy. What a beautiful piece of history. Thank you so much. And one of our radio listening audiences. So please like and share the page and let them know that this uh, drum is being given away on the second half hour of our show. Thank you, Queen Regina from Queen's Vision African Apparel. So we've heard a little bit from Kiki and as she quenches her thirst, I, I like hearing eight-year-old Kiki, but Let's take an opportunity and introduce your father, but really nobody can introduce your father better than you can. So I'm gonna turn the mic over to you, Miss Kiki. Tell us who old school is and what he's all about. Thank you so much for that again. And thank you, um, Miss Regina and Kima for, um, for um, saying those kind words. So my father is, uh, is an amazing man. He's a veteran. Um, he's a father of, of many. He take on many children, whether it's grandchildren, the children next door. He, doesn't, he, he loves children and he loves teaching. Um, I believe that, you know, he uh, traveled through many walks of life and he's worn many hats. And I think that where he stands now in his poetry and in, in his journey in life is to inspire and to teach and to really show the world that like, you know, it's it's time to be better, whether, you know, whether it's how we eat, how we think, you know, kind of same thing with Tupac said, how we live, you know, so it's time to come together okay. and then also put it back in our Caucasian counterparts face and let them know that, hey, we don't hate you. You can be a part of this, but, you know, let, you know, have your friends pull up and let them know that, you know, we need to come together and make sure that we leave a generation better than what we left it. So um, my father, old school poet, inspired me to become a poet. So I just want to 
say thank you and without further ado old school uh poet so he is not really good with technology so dad turn it turn it put the mute on and <laughs> drag your so we on. are about to hear from old school himself this tampa native born my goodness grew up in jackson heights let's hear what he has to say welcome old school uh, thank, you, thank you, sister, for being here. I'm, I'm honored to be here. And uh, there's a Chinese saying that it's a poor student that don't surpass their master. And I have to say that Kiki closing in on me real fast. <laughs> last year, I'll tell you, I have to tell you a story. Last year, she wasn't this good. And oh, within the last, no, within the last six months, she has come from me looking, me being her mentor to we being partners. She's okay. that good. Yeah, in the last six months. And I'm just, I'm amazed that she is, has transformed into such a great artist. I mean, she's she's amazing. Not because she's my daughter, not because I had anything to do with it. She's amazing on, on her own. And as you can see, she can stand her, on her own. And she and, and that's, that's, that's a great, um, if I leave nothing else on this planet, I've left her to carry on. So uh, I'm 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 just joy, and uh, from from her, I want to build. Well, I'm not. I want to add a lot more of to that to that list of that, of that where she is. I like to see a lot of more uh, artists come to that level because there's a lot of people who do good poetry, but mm -hmm. there's only a few that become to me as, as good as her to reach her level. And what such a, a time too. I'm still what working on my craft after six forty years and. She's maybe eight years in it, and we 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 are we are we are we are we are, we are equals now. We're equals, and that's that's saying a lot because I value my poetry very well, and I, I don't I think I'm pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, wow. she's she's she's, <laughs> she's she's taking the fruit, and she's she she's fallen far from the tree, but she now has equaled me, and that's a great statement. Old school, what an say. amazing compliment to give your daughter. Lakima, you wanted to say? I just want to say Kiki is one of the best poets I've ever met. She's like for real. Like I, I watched her process and what he said is true. Cause like when I first met her, um, coming to like one of our open mics, like every time she comes to our open mic, it's like she approved more and more and more. And now I'm just like. Oh man, you you guys are just such a refreshing and enlightening joy and an accompaniment to our show today. So hearing you talk about your daughter Kiki O School. What poetry comes to mind, since she's here and you're here, what poetry comes to mind or what would you use to envelop all that you said about her in a piece of your poetry? What can we hear from you about your daughter? Uh, it's like a, a two minute poem. You got two Go minutes? Go for it. Go okay. for it. I, I would consider this my swan song. And I okay. hope you know, I, I hope I, I, I can get through it because I'm learning from her now, her poise and her, her composure on stage. I'm, I'm praying and wishing I had that. I don't have that. I'm, I, right now, I'm nervous. In a one-on-one, -on -one, a one-on-two situation, I, I'm amazing. But when it comes to uh, mass viewing, I, I'm, I, I retreat within that stage fright thing. And I, I'm working on that. But her poise and her, her, her composure gives gives me something to strive for. So awesome. now the teacher is learning from the student. The circle, awesome. the circle continues, the circle goes. But I, this one I call the flaming pen. And it starts out with a chant. One who used the truth of data and only speak on the facts of the matter. One who used the truth of data and only speak on the facts of the matter. Because the test of a man's character is how much truth you defend. Some people would defend a small truth. Some people would defend an inconvenient truth. Some people would con uh, defend no truth at all, but the test of a man's character is how much truth they defend. Truth blazes a trail 
follow the flaming pen. I'm not like the casting cowards that come out of central casting. I come out blasting. Who, what, when, where, and why I be asking? Fake a spade to the black. They ain't never lasted. I'm 60 something still with the pen and the passion to inflame the moral consciousness of this country with my pen. Stage the starting point from which the conversation can begin. And they say, say, quit before you fail. I yell and hit them again. I can't go to just not even a nine or 10. I need a one round KO. So I hit them again and hit them again. Straight from the mind of the desk of the man with the flaming pen. While they play tactical, we got to go dial that. And the final analysis, we got to move past paralysis, what's really practical. Too many times we're blind right before our eyes. With a little info, we go and take sides so arrogantly with total disregard to the knowledge tree of those who so callously conscious of their malice deeds. Take a tax and say, palace, please, and try to make off with the fallacy, but they don't understand political, historic, economic context of our everyday reality. See, they steady woo and we steady losing. For real, the youth them live a disconnect and effect that makes them feel like they don't belong. So their axioms are all strong, their maxims are all wrong. And over and over and over again, they sing the same old suffering song. But when times get hard, I get harder than the times. I don't fit in at the bottom line. To get in where I fit in is my day-to-day grind. <clears throat> Excuse me. The fact that those who make the victors the heroes and the victims forgotten. And the bottom of the heap, those people be plotting. And unknown deeds, my peace, mine go rotten. But time is irrelevant because it's all related to King Cotton. But it's hard to do what we all, and I'm here, to, I'm here to tell you. We got to learn from our faults so they become lessons, blessings in life, not lessons in failure. But we got to build to the level where we can go that deep. Then provide a rescue mission for the masters of our people who are overlooked so they look forward to the next generation. I speak for my people in the absence of a conversation. Realizing information, rules, relations, realizing conversation, rule relation, realizing the last sensationalizing information, we need a new standard as guide with the baseline proclamation. Stop being a victim of condition. Where drop it like a hot means articulate your position. Have some concept of some ambition and go fast way past just hoping and wish, wishing. Because not even a nation of million can hold us down or under. Our economic appeal alone is the power they plunder. The media mixed messages make me more confused and wonder. And until we speak in one voice, we will roar like thunder. And the powers that be will be cast asunder. And your life will reflect the love a commitment, not phony, because my life journey is a calling, each test of testimony. Unlike those who debate with endless energies and those who stay in a state of violence with violent tendencies and those who fake want to be like me. See, I proceed to concede with greed long ago, but the emphasis between the social and the economic appeal, I too have a dream, but I keep the real for real. I'm a straight up dread. My words are food for thought, nourishment from which nations can be fed. Dreams and schemes we bought, we thought so we won't be misled, but the ancestors taught to knowledge we must wear. They thought so we ought to live the reality instead, but we were so misread. The cost of integration is the loss of self-esteem and the dreams that lay dead. Those without a voice are least likely to defend. They're engaged in the battle they're least likely to win. A photo op makes election year politicians want to stop and pretend, quick to kiss a baby and pray amen, but their status quo, state of course mentality, however, always sends them back to the board room with their profit-making friends, and I hit them so hard, make them back up and come again, truth blazes the trail. <sighs> Follow the flaming pen. You guys unmute and give him a round of applause. Did, I, um, did, you, did you hear it? Thank you. Thank you. I'm nervous. Oh, that now, was phenomenal. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Jimmy, I got to redeem myself with you, sister. We got to redeem myself <laughs> with you. Yeah. Okay, I know, okay. I know Kima just wanted to just tear the drums up. The whole it's coming, time. it's coming. We're gonna get together. We got to. It's destiny. It's destined. We are destined to do some collaborations. I believe I believe no, that. Oh, oh, and excuse me, excuse me. I forgot to speak to Queen. Sorry, Queen. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you. For, I'm just sorry. I'm, I'm so nervous, really. I'm, I'm just, I'm a bundle you, of nerves. Just you jump. were phenomenal. You were Thank phenomenal. You. Thank you, ma'am. That means, that means I'm a pretty good actor. <laughs> you are, well, call it what you want. I cannot wait to replay that. And what a beautiful dedication to your daughter, Kiki the Poet. Let, I'm going to go to Kiki first, and then Regina, I know you're bubbling up with, with joy because these are all your protégés. Kiki. Yeah, yes, girl. Yeah. Sorry, Woo -woo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Kima. I'm with you, Kima, on that one. If I had those drums, I'd be beating them can too. I say one? Can I say something? You go right ahead uh, on. Uh, recently, uh, Kiki uh, had one uh, opportunity to get a logo done. The logo that she had put up, I actually created it. The other day, she explained to me why she chose that vision for it. And I'm just like, this girl is young creative, for real. Like, her, the way that she, um, how she put words and um, helped me paint a picture 
know what you want is just like phenomenal. I just I just wanted to say that real quick. It's just like uh, phenomenal, phenomenally. It's just it's just like oh, for real. Yeah. Well, right. thank you, right. thank you, right. Kiva. Yeah. Thank you, Kiva, the, man. <laughs> Miss Kiki, the poet, you have the mic. Thank you. Um, so I'm doing a poem. I no, we just wanted to hear what you thought of your father's poem. Oh, he dedicated um, to you. Listen, I, I, I'm like. I have no words. I'm so speechless. For, I've heard that poem a million times. And I'm um, honestly, my goal is to, to read it. I'm not used to it. I'm trying to learn it. Like that's, that's, um, I, my, I've told, I've been told that I do like short poems. I'll do like one minute or two minutes. So for him to say that, like, I'm, it's the, the teacher learning from the student, like he's completely all wrong. I have so much learning to do so. And it's basically, you can hear it from that poem. So I just want to say like, yeah, good job, Bay. You did a really good job. <laughs> he did, he did, he did. Queen Regina. Unmute, Queen. While Queen is unmuting her phone, phone, she also has customers in the store. You can go and find her at okay. the Rebirth Business Business collaborative on Comanche. I think it's 1924, but yes, she'll give us the address because she's gotten some amazing things in her from fashions to artifacts to health products to all natural products. Shout out to Muffy Charles, yes. who was on the show last yes. week, who traveled to Tampa to be a part of the Sankofa Winter Extravaganza. Queen, what did you think of old school poem? Amazing, amazing. And in that poem, how he brought up, uh, um, it spoke about himself and about so many other black men and women, you know, what, what we're going through and what we, how we can achieve success through that. It talks about the uh, layers of pain that we go through oh and how we come together. And that's the thing about Port. Um, I remember back in the day, you remember when rap was just not accepted, but basically what we're doing is expressing ourselves as yeah. black and brown people. And that's how we can, we can feel it in the rhythm of how we're saying the words and the rhythm in it. And so to have that to come back again and to have him here in Tampa um, and to perform at e the events, it's amazing. Uh, to say that you don't have a comfort level uh, when you're going in front of the people, we are your people, feel comfortable. We're family, yeah. we're the culture and we have you and you have us. You speak our story, uh, you speak our truth a and that's what we need. So keep speaking. Thank you so much for passing it on to your daughter. Uh, both of you have different vibes on how you do the poetry, but it all resonates to us as black people you're speaking to us you're saying things that you're putting together words that that's exactly what i wanted to say that's exactly what i went through that's exactly how i feel you're able to do that because i'm you and you're me we're connected we have something in common it's our dna and uh, we relate to you so we're so happy that you're able to put those words together and to give us what we're needing in the community. I'm doing the clothing, you're doing the poetry, Cheryl is connecting us uh, through the business and through social media and all around the world. So we're coming together. I'm so proud of where we're at now, uh, 2023 as black people, as we're still facing and we're going through trials and tribulations. It seems like we're coming together and we're doing it together. So thank you both for expressing yourself through uh, your poetry and Lakima, how you bring the music in and you tie it together with your art. Um, I, 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 I'm just so proud to be from Tampa. And it's, um, a, it's a good place to be from. <laughs> it's a good place to be. Um, yes. And James Brown said it best. Uh, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. I'm proud. And I am. There you go. There you go. I'm black and I'm proud. And we yes, salute yes. Black History yes. Month. You all are making history today. 
And we, I, I'm thinking here going, how do we hear more of this? Unfortunately, our show is going to be coming to an end, but this is something that you want a snippet of more often. So I'm, I'm listening to old school. Can we hear a from Kiki before we close? Oh, oh no, yeah, we, we're, she, we're, gonna, we're gonna come back and hear, we're gonna, we will be coming yeah. back and hearing from Kiki. Right. But I wanted to ask old school, I'm thinking about an event and we'll talk after the, after the show so that that poem can, can be heard. I, I gotta say one, one more thing. It speaks the truth, old school. You are 100. Thank you. I, I got to say one more thing to uh, Queen. Yes. Yes. Oh, I, I have to uh, thank Queen because Queen gave me a microphone. She gave me a stage and she gave me an audience and told me to practice, practice, practice. And I, I'm, I'm indebted to her for that. Oh, Queen. And well, that's thank what you. she does. And, oh, oh, I, and uh, I like your 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 intro, so I, I'm gonna get get you to write my intro to my book. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Listen, yeah. we are just we're 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 vessels. This is the show that will be all up in your business, and this is how we do it. And we're so appreciative of that. So again, old school. Do you publish your poetry? Uh, I, I had one book published when I was in the Navy in 82, and I'm working on a friend now with the name Benjamin Ford, and we're in the midst of publishing a second book. And, oh, my goodness. And I'm um, working with another artist. We're going to do some T-shirts. Uh, I'm going to put some more portraits and historical uh, uh, heroes on some T-shirts, because I heard you say earlier, Black History should be every month. I have, right. to, I, have, I, have to, I have to say Black History should be every day. It should be up on it. Should be up it on is. It. It's 365. 365, 365, and it should be personal. Um, yes. we are, each person, each black person, should have connect with some someone from that past, from our from our history, to to mentor us, to to, uh, to for us to emulate, to embolden us with their with their with their contributions and legacy, so that we can all move forward on the same page. Well, old school, as, as I listened to you and, and your daughter saying, I, I wanted to memorize that poem, it flowed so naturally. We could we could actually feel the spirit resonating within us mm -hmm. as you talked about the truth and for us looking at it as data. What are we doing with all of this data that's being presented to us? Right. How are we using it? How are we executing it? How does it make us better? And I love the way you always separate the I and you make it about us and we, those pronouns become very, very important. Oh, but yeah. my goodness, how do you remember it all? Well, I have to I tell you a secret. That. That's the only one I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a, it's an amazing story from that poetry. Because every year I write, I have leftover lines that don't fit into no other poem. So I took oh. all these lines and put them on three by five cards. It was like 12 of them, 14. I threw them up in the air. I picked them up. And as I picked them up, that poem came alive. Wow. I've tried that several Thank times. Thank you for sharing that. And I, tried it several times that. Before. I tried it several times before, and it didn't work. No, but that one time. Work. And they, that, well, that was that one good, time. great, unique time. I yes. share that because, and again, I make this appeal. If you're listening from the radio station, from YouTube, the show is global. Please like and share this. Yes. We want our culture, we want people in general to hear your amazing <laughs> gift. Well, I'm available on old school poetry on all platforms. On all platforms. Well, thank you so much. We've got a segue back to Kiki. She has a poem that she's going to recite to us, and we, we must hear it before we get to the end of the show. Then we'll sweat, segue back over to Lakima, and she can tell us about the final steps to the unveiling of a mural in Brooksville. Miss Kiki the Poet, you have the mic. When, when Kiki speaks, she has to play a dual role. Go, Miss Kiki. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. Um, I wanted to explain really quick that my dad, my um, you the when you send in the email, you ask who we are. My name, Kiki Kamal. Um, that actually is my name. My dad named me that at birth, and Kamal is a Swahili for silent warrior. So I kind of felt like I needed to take on the role to speak for people who can't speak for themselves. So poems like uh, Black Queen or I'm Sorry, Black Man 
or um, Ravens in a Cage, to me, that's that's me trying to let my people know that I hear you, I see you, and you're not alone. So, um, well, yeah. Silent Warrior, what do you have for us? Um, I really, to be honest, I'm just going to, Kimo, I don't know what to do. Um, <laughs> so we'll make it. We'll, she apparently wanted to hear something that perhaps she has heard. All right, before. Um, I know about this, Kiki. What mm-hmm. resonates with you so much that it's just like every time you perform it, you like that's that's like that's that's the one. It's a uh, policing brutality. There you Good. go. So this. Do that one. Um, police and brutality means a lot to me because I was um, I was being a Navy veteran. I didn't ever think that I would ever get beaten by um, cops here in Tampa Police, uh, oh, Tampa. God. So that actually happened in 2019. So with that, I put it into my poetry. And so I um, wrote a poem called Police and Brutality. They're killing us, but where do I start? How long will we march? Decade after decade, tearing Black families apart. Certain celebrities making it cool to break each other's hearts. So we continue to buy their products and sell ourselves for parts. I say this with sorrow. Most of us are hollow. Empty shells excited only for tomorrow. Not seeing the dead bodies lying in the cargo. They're killing us poisoning our foods, selling us a ruse while we're stuck being in tune to the lies on the news, gas used as a tool and our children needing certain vaccinations just to be in school, climate change, taxes gain, using electronic devices just to play a game, metaverse the next curse to draw you away from spirituality, creating a simulation of a desired reality, drawing us further and further away from humanity, but we don't see the plan because Our eyes are covered by Bluetooth Ray-Bans, posting our lives on social media just to stay relevant. Thanks to Gen X, we were able to get the evidence, was given first class tickets and still felt the turbulence. Rodney King's beating wasn't even the worst of it. They've been capturing us for years, buck breaking, gator babies, such malevolence, creating new laws to maintain their significance. Trayvon Martin killed and George Zimmerman freed from life's innocence. They're on a mission. Did you know Biden signed a document to allow police in without permission? I'm telling you, they're killing us. Breeding us, putting us in a hole. Their vision all along since 1704 when they created slave patrol, feet and wrists chained in rows with more and more black bodies surrounded by black crows and yet racial equality is not their MO. But of course, if you're Intent was to bring harm, then you too would be against police reform. But tell me, how is this the norm that cops are killing the very people that pay for their uniform? I'm telling you, they're killing us. Like it's a chore using excessive force. The 14th Amendment was supposed to prevent a bloodshed, of course, but instead we all like dead. Well, mama say a closed mouth won't get fed. So let's set it off like Vivica A. Fox said, Biden administration. Don't get scared, but tell me, what is the procedure when you have a gun to your head? Mm. Thank you. That was, Ah! you guys can unmute and clap. Old school, that's your silent warrior. Voice for the people. Yes, ma'am, yes, she is. She has a voice for us all. More importantly, she has a message, a poignant message. And I, I'm looking forward to getting copies. I will play this recording over and over because you all covered the gamut of what we as a people, of what we as a culture, of what we should be like or what we should be doing. And why aren't we? Why that, aren't we? That's the next book. That's the next poem. That's the next group of poems. Why aren't we? It's true. Because well, we got to take some action steps. We got to make some, as a people, as, yes. as a force, we got to make some action steps. We got to devise and, and some strategize action. 
some steps. Why aren't we? Old school, do you have a drum? I uh, know, ma'am, but I'm, I'm going to get with Kimba and she's going to teach me the art. Because I could just see me hey. now on the drums. That would give me a lot of stability and uh, 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 it would take take some more fight away if I had something to do with my hands. I believe that. Well, Regina, you can the drum at Queen Vision. They have drums at Queen Vision. <laughs> well, hold Regina, on, uh, Lakima. You tomorrow. Hold on, Lakima. This is what I'm we gonna... have to do. Queen and I, Queen and I will be in sync on this decision. And we are making a decision with the contribution that you shared with us over the weekend, with your contribution of sharing your core, your life history with us. It's Black History Month. Regina, I think she has yes. a customer in the store. Yes. Yeah, but, but that's okay. Love it. I would love it if we would give our drum to old school. Old school, we could bless you with the drum. You're so deserving. You are so deserving. Yes, you are just so deserving. Hold on, y'all. Wow, that's awesome. Yes, we could do that. <laughs> my customers are in the store. I just love my people. I just well, love you, my people. They are. They know we're on this live, but they're still, they're at it. I love them. And, and let's do this. See, he's already in motion. Yeah, he's ready Kim for gotta, Kim, Kim, Kim gotta Kima, the Kima, moves. you got your student. A couple We're moves. You got a drum. student now. You got a you student. Got a student. We're going to go ahead and, and let Miss uh, let Queen Regina go because she has a store full of customers. We know it's Black History Month and folk want to get their African garments. Thank you, you Queen. That. We will see We're you here at or next month. Go ahead. I just want everybody to know exactly where we are, 1924 yeah. East Comanche, Queens Vision African Apparel. And I know it's Black History Month. I'm closed on Sundays and Mondays. However, I know that we have a sense of urgency. So yes. if you give me a call and it's a reasonable hour, and if I'm closed, call me, I'll open the doors. I have the keys. So oh thank you all. Goodness. Thank you. Thank you, Queen Regina. And thank you for making history and allowing all of us to come together and then providing such an amazing gift to, to old school. Old yes. school, we, we love you. Lakima, you know we work together. It was a shout out to Tampa Hillsborough Action Plan. Derek Blue and the Thap Group put on the Black Wall Street and, the, and they brought the cast to Tampa and we did a gala that night with dinner and a show. And that Saturday was for all of the Black business owners to come and participate in Black Wall Street. Kima created the image for Thap's Black Wall Street. I got to work side by side with her and to see her go through what I call the old school process of creating these t-shirts she never took a break it was just group after group after group and i think we sold out and i still have my t-shirt and it was that welcomes black wall street right there on the campus of 5508 so shout out to you miss lakima you're getting ready very, very soon to unveil. Give us a final snippet about the unveiling. Take about a minute. How do you feel? Because history is about to be made today. Um, Kima? Yes, I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to, um, to be a representation of doing a mural of Jerome Brown. He, he's a football player. And, um, a native of Brooksville, and he actually passed away at an early age. He was like probably like in his twenties. He was like passed away, and um, he has done a lot of great things um, in the city. Um, and Brooksville has uh, created a, a foundation, a center for him, and they're going to be revealing um, uh, the mural in, in memory of him. He did some really oh, great things, awesome. like. Um, he stopped a, a KKK riot. Uh, he he has uh, he has a great record in the NFL. Like he he 
was really doing his thing uh, during his season. So I'm honored to be able to uh, represent such a uh, phenomenal uh, black man uh, that has really uh, uh, laid a, a foundation and his mark on this earth for the time that he was. And, I, and it's an honor for me to be able to um, to be a part of the unveiling uh, well, with a mural created by is- that is phenomenal. Lakima, that is phenomenal. Congratulations to you. Our prayer is that it's a successful unveiling to the life of an incredible athlete. I am certain he must be smiling down on you and his family would have to be just thrilled to come out there and be a part of, of this unveiling. Safe travels back here. We'll look more for you and we'll see more of the mural unveiling on her social media platforms. We're going to segue to Miss Missy LTM. M-I-S-S-Y-L-T-M on all platforms. Um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, and all the platforms. You'll see my name, my team. We will list that. We will list that in our thank you post. So yeah. thank you to Queen Regina. Thank you to Old School. We're going to allow, thank you to our radio listening audience from all over, whether you were on In Touch News, our Facebook page, YouTube, we appreciate you. Please, with what you heard today, like and share and continue to help Old School and Kiki the Port let their poetry go viral. Miss Kiki, we've made all of our thank yous and we're going to end the show. I'm going to go ahead and say this show is a wrap, but I'll allow you to close us out. Final thoughts or a final word of poetry, Miss Kiki the Port. Um, I just want to say one, thank you so much for Kimba again and everyone that's on here, Miss Regina, Miss Queen, my dad, old school, you, Miss Cheryl, um, for this opportunity. I did want to explain um, that my logo, the lion and the butterfly, I wanted to incorporate yes. them together. Um, thanks to Kima because it meant silent warrior. And to me, um, I was always a butterfly. And I was always shut down and quiet, um, but still so I would fly and be so, you know, pretty from the outside, but I wanted to roar again. So I wanted to incorporate a lion and a butterfly at the same time. Um, and because of my famous words from Maya Angelou, she said that people will always remember what people won't remember what you say but they will always remember how you make them feel so i just you know that's what i want thank you thank Thank you you for how you made us feel again this show is a wrap thank you all bye-bye